my ring, Mr. Richard Kinsey. Escorted here by Joseph Hughes and Liz Dunham. Mr. Kinsey will also be judging the passport group later, but here are our working group, best of breed winners, led in by the Alaskan Malamutes and the Bernese Mountain Dog, the Bouvier de Plant, the Boxer, the Bullmaster Complex, followed by the Doberman. The Dog de Bordeaux follows on. The German Pinscher has joined us. I to say the giant schnauzer in his net. The Great Dane, the Leonberger, the Mastiff, and the Neapolitan Mastiff. Next comes the Newfoundland. The Portuguese water dog comes next. The Rottweiler. The Russian Black Terrier. Next is the Siberian Husky. The Saint Bernard. The Tibetan Mastiff. And from the any variety not separately classified, the Canadian, Canadian Eskimo dog there. Yes, thank you. Now, there are full house of our best of breed winners. Our judge just walking down the line, taking in the general outline and balance of the dogs. Often this is the first indicator of good breed type, that they're the right shape for the breed. And the first dog is called forward, the Alaskan Malamute. Thirty-nine of them here today for Judge Mrs. Sue Pollocule. Our winner is a bitch, number 39, and she came from an entry of 51 today. The Alaskan Malamute is the strongest and heaviest built of the sled dogs, built for hauling heavy loads over long distances. Built with strong bone, powerful shoulders and hindquarters to do the job, and to equip them to living out in all extremes of climate this thick double coat. Even the inside of the ears is furred to protect them, and the tail like a waving plume over the back. There's our winning Alaskan Malamute, number 39. Our judge now looking at the Bernese Mountain Dog. There were 33 here today for Judge Miss Kate McDuff. She chose this dog, number 74, as her best of breed winner. This is one of the native Swiss breeds, developed as a, an all-purpose farm dog. All of the Swiss breeds come in this rich tricolor pattern, black, tan, with white. At one stage in their history, they were called the cheese factory dogs because they were used for hauling the carts with the cheeses on to the station for distribution. Wonderful natures strong and sturdy, fantastic temperaments as household companions. Could also be a herding dog, the, the all-purpose farm dog. The winning Bernese Mountain, number 74, yeah.
The Bouvier de Flanders now has been sent forward by a brief specialist, Miss Wendy Simmons. From an entry of seven, she has chosen this bitch, number 86, as best of breed. This was a, a cattle droving dog, used to drive the cattle, herding the cattle, driving it to market. The word boo in its native Belgium means farm or homestead. This was the dog of the farmstead. It has... The Bouvier has shown its versatility in other fields. In the, first world, the two First World Wars, they were used in the trenches as messenger dogs and ambulance dogs. Very skilled at tracking. Our winning Bouvier there is the bitch number 86. There were 79 boxers here today for Frances Kral. She chose this dog, number 118, as her best of breed. Coming from the largest entry in the working group today, another German breed, the Boxer, one of the bull breeds, which means he has the bulldog in his background as one of his ancestors. Developed in Germany as a guard dog, but also as a hunting dog. The forebears of the boxer used to hunt bear and boar and deer. They're very popular as household companions. They're great characters. Again, also has been used as a tracking dog and as a guard dog. The winning boxer there is number 118. Our bull mastiffs today were judged by our overseas visitor, Mr. Sean Wills Watson. He judged a nice entry of 47 bull mastiffs and chose this dog number 188 as best of breed. This was a breed which was developed as a gamekeeper's dog to warn off poachers. So it had to be strong, sturdy and courageous, but also be athletic enough to chase off the poachers and to jump a five barred gate. So its substance with athleticism. This one, a fawn, we also see them in brindle. So a combination of substance and athleticism. Our winning bull mastiff there, number 188. Forty-two Dobermans today for Robin Newhouse. He chose this dog, number 242, as best of breed. Another German breed. Takes his name from the man who developed the breed, Herr Louis Doberman. Who wanted a dog to help him on his rounds as a tax collector. He was, so he was a courageous guard dog. Known sometimes as the Doberman Pincher, the word pince means to bite or to grip, which tells you how he works as a guard dog. Used by the forces, the army, and the police force in some countries. Just settling into his job now, the 
Doberman. For many, it's their first experience of a big ring like this under canvas after the lockdown. Our winning Doberman, number 242. Now our judge looking at the outline of the Dog de Bordeaux. Nice entry of 43 for Jeff Luscott today. He chose this dog, number 305, as best of breed. This is a breed which was sometimes called the French Mastiff. It's thought that it has the English Bull Mastiff in its background. Some stock from England being sent out to France at the late 18th century, as the breed in France was almost extinct. In the French Revolution, round about 1789, when the, the aristocracy were being guillotined and beheaded in the French Revolution, often their dogs, the dog de Bordeaux, which used to guard their chateau, were killed with them. So the breed was almost extinct. Some English bull mastiffs sent to help the breed. Yes. The distinctive outline and movement of the dog de Bordeaux. The German pinchers today were judged by Mr. John Purnell. 19 of them here, and he chose this bitch, number 313, as best of breed. This is the middle size, the standard size of the pincher, the gripping dog, the word pincher. This was used as an all-purpose farm dog, keeping down the vermin. We saw the Doberman, the largest, larger size and the larger relation, a few dogs ago. In the toy group, Tomorrow, we'll see the miniature pincher, the scaled-down version. Make very good household companions. There's very little grooming. They're obedient, intelligent. They've never gained the popularity of either the Doberman or the miniature pincher. But there's our winner, number 305. Number 313, I apologize, yeah. The giant schnauzers today were judged by Bert Easton. From an entry of 20, he's chosen this bitch, number 333, as best of breed. the largest of the Schnauzer family. Developed in the 19th century as a drover's dog driving cattle to market. They've also been successful working with the armed forces and the police. This is the largest and strongest of the Schnauzer family. They should have some substance a crisp wire top coat, a long and powerful head. There is our winning giant schnauzer, number 333. And now forward the Great Dane, judged today by Sigurd Wilberg, from an entry of 74, very nice entry there. He chose this brindle dog, number 358, as best of breed. Don't be deceived by the name Great Dane. He doesn't, wasn't developed in Denmark, he's another German breed. And he was developed as a hunter of wild boar. 
and many think he should be in the hound group as a, a hunter of game. One of the largest breeds of dogs, sometimes known as the Apollo of dogs. Noble, long-legged. We often see the fawns and the harlequins. Here we have the brindle. The Great Dane should have a look of dash and dare, should be willing to go anywhere with confidence. Our winning Great Dane there is number 358. Our judge now looking at the Leon Berger Best of Breed winner, sent forward by John Evans from an entry of 34 dogs. This is the winner. It's a dog, number 440. And this is a breed where our judge has experience as a breeder and exhibitor. Yet another German breed developed around the town of Leonberg in southern Germany. And if you go to the town, you'll see on their crest, their coat of arms for the town, and on their flag, a silhouette of the Leonberger. Carries the name Leo because he's lion-like. Lion-like in his colors, and also through the mane of hair extending over the neck and shoulders. Thought that he has the Newfoundland in his background, and the St. Bernard. Our judge now looking at the Mastiff. Sent forward by Miss Sargent from an entry of 19. She has chosen this dog, number 466. This breed used to be known as the Old English Mastiff. It's thought that dogs of this type were in England when the Roman invade, when the, in the Roman invasion, so it goes back centuries. Again, developed as a guard dog and a poacher's dog to warn off poachers. Bigger and more substantial than the Bull Mastiff a rather a longer dog, the head strong, a shorter muzzle. One of the great challenges for the breed is to get size and substance with sound movement, and the breeders have worked hard for this. Our winning Mastiff there, number 466. And now a Mastiff of continental type, the Neapolitan Mastiff, hailing, as its name suggests, from Naples. This is, a, again, another ancient breed. It's thought that dogs of this type led the Roman centurions into battle, often wearing a, a thick collar with spikes on it to be very forbidding sight for the, the enemy as they approached them. They were the dogs of war. Of course, the, in the early days, the, the, when they came to this country, they were much more exaggerated, with more loose skin. However, the breeders have worked hard to make the breed less exaggerated and sounder on the move. They should, should not be overburdened with too much loose skin and wrinkle. Our winning Neapolitan Mastiff there is number 483. <laughs> 61 entries in the Newfoundland ring today. 
for Judge Jill Peak. She chose this dog number 496 as best of breed. This is a breed which hails from North America and Canada, the icy waters of Newfoundland, where he was used as a water rescue dog. Everything about him is functional. Big barrel ribs to give him lung capacity to allow him to swim for long periods. A double waterproof coat. Strong, big web feet to help him with his swimming. They've also be, they were trained to haul in fishermen's nets and boats. But amazing water rescue dogs, often jumping out of helicopters to rescue people. The people hanging on to a harness attached to the dog. The dog floating and keeping the person afloat. Our wonderful water rescue dog, the Newfoundland. And here is another water dog, the Portuguese water dog. Kevin Young judged 25 of them today and chose this dog number 573 as best of breed. In its native Portugal, it was used for bringing in the fishing nets for the fishermen. Very popular in the Algarve region where it was developed. It was also amazingly used as a messenger dog at sea, often sent to swim across to other boats with a message, and often used as a foghorn, the dogs barking to alert other boats of their whereabouts. So there's an amazing use of the dog to help man in his work. The traditional clip here, you see, the clipped hind quarters to aid it in swimming, the plume of hair on the tail to protect the end of the tail against the icy waters. The Rottweiler is forward now, for, judged by Kevin Young. 66 of them here today. His choice was this bitch, number 591. The breed was developed near the town of Rottweil in Germany. This was a cattle market center, and the dogs were bred to herd cattle. It's thought that the ancestors of the Rottweiler were brought to Germany from Rome. The Roman armies, on their campaigns through Europe, took cattle with them to feed the troops. These were the dogs that herded the cattle along. When they left Germany, they left some dogs of this type, and the breed was developed there. Again, it's hugely versatile in what it can do, a tracking dog used by the forces and the police. And now here's a dog of substance and a relatively modern dog it's the russian black terrier and he only hails back to the 1940s when he was developed deliberately developed by the a russian breeding station to develop a guard dog and to, for a dog who would round up fugitives from the armies and prisoners of war it's thought that the airedale and the schnauzer and the Rottweiler play some part in his development. And perhaps the, the Newfoundland. This is a dog of great substance, tremendously heavy bone under that coat, a strong head, thick lips, relatively modern, the first standard, published in 1958. coming over here in around the 1980s, rough, roughly. So relatively modern, they're Russian black terrier. The 
There were 63 Siberian Huskies here today for breed specialist, Mr. Hall. He chose this dog, number 687, as best of breed. We saw earlier the Alaskan Malamute, the, the dog for pulling heavy loads at a steady speed. Here we have the speed dog. This is the fastest, most athletic of the haulage dogs. Developed in Siberia by the Chuchki tribe, where they lived, they could live with the family, much prized because of their use in pulling loads and helping them in their lives. Now, the favoured dogs in sled racing. A double coat, lighter in build than the Alaskan Malamute. And now the St. Bernard. St. Bernard's today were judged by Mr. Richard Bott. An entry of 20. He chose this bitch, number 732, as his best of breed. Again, we all know of the, the advertising campaigns of Martel Brandy, who publicized the breed. Often strapped with a, a little keg of brandy around the neck to rescue people from snowdrifts. Well, the rescue's correct. The brandy's a bit of a commercialism. But this was a marvelous dog. Gets its name the St. Bernard because it was in the Burn Pass in the Alps where monks had a, a hospice where tourists and travelers were welcome. And when they were lost in avalanches and snow drifts, the dogs were sent out to find them. So great scenting powers. Our winning St. Bernard there, the bitch, number 732. And now we have another Mastiff. The Tibetan Mastiff is forward. 11 of them here from Mr. Richard Gardner. He chose this bitch, number 748. It's thought that the Tibetan Mastiff is the most ancient of the Mastiffs and the forebear from which all the other Mastiffs came. In his in ancient Tibet, dogs of this type were used to guard the farms and the homesteads, often chained at the gates of the farms, having their own little kennel there, living out all the year round, so immensely hardy, especially when you think of the climate of Tibet and the altitude. So they are protected by this thick double coat, a tail plumed over the back, and the males carry a mane of hair over their neck and shoulders. So there are winning Tibetan Mastiff, number 748. Now, coming from the any variety, not so pretty classified section, we have the Canadian Eskimo dog. Sent forward by Jeff Corrish. From an entry of eight, he chose this dog, number 750, as best of breed. We've seen the heavily built Alaskan Malamute, the lighter built Siberian. He's a dog that comes in the middle of them, the Canadian Eskimo dog. Again, absolutely functional in its thick, weatherproof coat, its curved tail. It could curl up tight, living outside all the year round. Curl up tight and wrap the tail around it. Even the inside of its ears are furred.
the Canadian government have set up a breeding station because when the motorization of sleds came in, this breed was under threat. They no longer needed the dogs. The Canadian government have set up a breeding station to keep the breed pure and to keep it going. So there's our Canadian Eskimo dog, number 750. And that completes the hands-on examination for Mr. Kinsey. Now walking down the line, taking in the dogs, reminding himself of what he found on hands-on examination. We've all got our favorites from the ringside, but he's had the privilege of going over them, hands-on, feeling their conf confirmation, looking at them at close quarters. And it's, it's at this point he has to decide which eight or so he's going to pull out into the shortlist. So the Bull Mastiff comes forward. The Great Dane and the German Schnauzer. And the Doberman is out too. The Neapolitan Mastiff. The Portuguese Water Dog, the Rottweiler. The Saint Bernard. And there we are. There's our shortlist for the working group at Leeds. 2022. Thank you to all of the others representing their breeds so well. Well done on your best of breeds today. It's one of these eight who will be coming back on Sunday to compete for best in show. Now, they're going to have one run out. Time to show your support, ladies and gentlemen. There is the Bull Mastiff, the dog. Going around to the top of the ring now, sent forward by Sean Watson. And there's the Doberman, sent forward by Robin Newhouse. Round he goes. And here's the giant schnauzer. Sent forward by Bert Easton. Round she goes. And here's the Great Dane, the Dash and Dare of the Brindle Great Dane, sent forward by Sigurd Wilberg. And here's the Neapolitan Mastiff. With fan club, obviously, yes. And here, the distinctive outline of the Portuguese water dog with that mane of hair over his body, the plume tail. And here's the Rottweiler, the breed in which our judge started his showing career. And finally, the rescue dog from the Bern Pass in Switzerland, the St. Bernard. Obviously devoted to a handler, trotting on, 
Loose lead. So now is make your mind up time for Mr. Kinsey. Who's coming back on Sunday? Who are the top four in this working group? The boards are being called for. Boards are coming out. Now, where's the handshake going to the winner? Only Mr. Kinsey knows at the moment, but soon we'll share the secret. Winner of the working group at Leeds is the Bull Mastiff. The Bull Mastiff wins the working group. For second space, no, the, the Great Dane. For third spot, the Giant Schnauzer. And for fourth place, the St. Bernard. So there we are, our winners in the working group, led home by the Bull Mastiff. So it's the Bull Mastiff we'll see on Sunday coming back. Rosette's coming out now from the club secretary. Liz Stannard, from Delighted Owners and Handlers. And before we send them on a lap of honour, big hand for Richard Kinsey, our judge for that group. And I'm sure it's a very happy Bull, bull Mastiff leading them round. Our working group winner, the Bull Mastiff. <laughs>